Hey guys, I'm Tom with Tech Chef, and this is a pretty simple question. How much of a difference does your graphics card make to your games? Well, I've teamed up with CyberPower and NVIDIA for this video, and rather than going for some ultimate gaming PC that you'll never be able to afford, look what I've got, this is a good but not over the top custom build with 16 gigs of RAM, a Ryzen 7 5700G, and an NVIDIA GTX 1660 Super. So a very nice little upper mid-range build that doesn't cost a fortune. So the 1660 Super is a pretty capable card, but is it worth paying more for a bit of a beefier graphics card? Well, here are a couple that I made earlier. Which one is which? We've got the RTX 3060 and also the RTX 3070 Ti, because all three are great options at different price points. And of course, one advantage of buying a pre-build from a retailer like CyberPower is you're not paying stupid money for these cards, and they're actually in stock, which also helps. So if you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description below. Check out CyberPower's huge range of PCs and have a play with their configurator to spec your own custom build. Okay, so four games, three graphics cards, and two resolutions, 1080p and 1440p. But first, let's run a quick three mark times by benchmark to see in theory the kind of difference we're looking at here. And between the three cards, the 3060 is 37% faster than the 1660 Super, and then the 3070 Ti is a further 55% faster. However, this doesn't take into account some of the extra features like ray tracing and DLSS, and also how does this translate into games? Well, let's jump into a bit of Fortnite. Epic settings, and at 1080p on the 1660 Super, I'm averaging a pretty healthy 84 FPS. If we bump up to 1440p or Quad HD, then the frame rate dips to 52. That's a 38% drop going to the higher res. Now, bringing in the RTX 3060's results, and we're looking at a 50% jump in FPS across both resolutions. And finally, the 3070 Ti is over twice as fast as the 1660 Super, and still 40% faster than the 3060. But that's not the whole story, because as I mentioned, we're not taking into account DLSS, which I think is actually magic in how it all works. It stands for Deep Learning Super Sampling, which renders the game at a lower resolution, so it's less demanding on your PC, and then upscales it back up using machine learning. Mostly it goes over my head, but it boosts your frame rate. So these two RTX cards uh, have ray tracing, DLSS. The GTX cards don't. So let's run Fortnite again, but with DLSS enabled. And just look at the difference. We're seeing a 38% and an 11% boost respectively. And that is essentially free extra performance. Okay, so to save time and avoid boring you all to death, these are all my results from the four games on test at both 1080p and 1440 with DLSS enabled where it's supported. And to the surprise of absolutely no one, the more expensive, more powerful cards perform better. Who'd have thunk it? So I reckon if you were going to build a PC like this, the 3060 is probably the best bet, uh, in my opinion at least. Obviously, you can pay as much as you want and get better performance, but there are a couple of things to think about which will hopefully give you an idea of what card's best. And the first thing, the big one really, is actually what's back over there, your monitor. What resolution are you playing at and what refresh rate? If you've just got a good old-fashioned 1080p 60Hz monitor, then something like the 1660 Super here is all you need. I mean, all four games maxed out comfortably hit over 60 FPS. So you're not really gonna see much benefit going with a higher end card aside from just future-proofing. But if you do have a high refresh 144 hertz or a high resolution 1440p monitor or both, then you'll definitely want one of the beefier RTX cards to fully take advantage of it. Secondly, it all depends what you play because I don't think most people need 394 FPS in Rainbow Six Siege, unless you're a pro esports gamer with a 360 hertz monitor or something, in which case, actually, maybe that would be a good idea. But for most people, that is overkill and you just won't see the benefit. So if you are playing older or less demanding games, then you don't need to spend the money on a super high-end card. Thirdly, don't underestimate the value-added extra features that we get with these RTX cards. I do appreciate NVIDIA is partially sponsoring this video, but I would be saying it anyway. And of course, AMD do have their uh, equivalents of most of these technologies, but it's such a big reason to upgrade or pay that little bit extra to go from a GTX to an RTX card, particularly one of these new 3000 series cards. Of course, ray tracing for more realistic lighting and reflections, and my personal favorite, DLSS, to give you that FPS boost. And they all add up to give you a better gaming experience.
And finally, if you are thinking about buying a new graphics card or a whole new PC, then remember that it's only gonna be as fast as its slowest component. So make sure you have a decent processor and a good amount of fast RAM to back up your shiny new GPU. And also bear in mind that some games like GTA V are very CPU or processor intensive. So don't just put all your money into a nice new graphics card, make sure your system as a whole can support it and there aren't any bottlenecks. You can also see with this Lian Li case I've got here, we've got a mesh front uh, and also a mesh top. So we've got really nice airflow uh, coming through. We've also got this AIO cooler because keeping your components cool so they don't have to throttle and also giving you a bit more headroom to overclock if you want to, again, all adds up to give you a more powerful gaming rig. So yes, buying a new graphics card does make a difference to your performance in games. Of course it does. Uh, but it all comes down to how much money you have to spend and crucially what your setup is. Don't buy something that will be completely bottlenecked by the rest of your PC. And if you've got a rubbish old monitor, well, maybe upgrade that first. But if you do fancy buying a whole new system, then head on over to CyberPower. I'll leave a link below because they're one of the UK's best custom PC retailers with excellent build quality, warranty, customer service. And as graphics cards continue to be pretty hard to find and also very expensive, buying a pre-build like this is a great way of not overpaying. But if you've got any questions about specking a PC or what graphics card you should go for, then do let me know in the comments below. I try my best to respond uh, to as many of them as I can. And if you enjoyed the video, then a little like and subscribe would be lovely. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.